Hey, this is Jason with TradingReviewers.com, and today we're joined by Alex Tamiz, trader and co-founder of the My Investing Club trading community. Alex, it's great to have you on. Welcome. It's nice to be on. Hey, Alex, for those who aren't familiar with you yet and your story, can you tell us a little bit about your trading background? Uh, how did you originally become interested in trading? Yeah, so, I mean, it's kind of a crazy story. I mean, I didn't think it was a crazy story, but everyone tells me it's a crazy story. And now kind of thinking back on it, I guess it is kind of crazy, but um, I was, I think, either a senior in high school or a freshman in college. And I had a part-time job at Starbucks just trying to make some extra money. Uh, my dad was going through some financial struggles. So I thought maybe like chipping in a little bit would kind of help him. And, you know, I was still a kid at the time, so I had no real background. So there was a Starbucks maybe five minutes away from my house. So I said, you know what, I'll go, I'll be a barista there. And maybe I'll meet some girls, you know, something, something like that. And uh, I was working at Starbucks. I was working part-time, uh, maybe like, 30 hours a week. And I was making, I think back then I was making either like 130 to $150 a week after taxes. And I had a girlfriend at the time. And what I would do is gas was, I think like four or $5 a gallon back then. It was crazy. So to fill up my tank was like 60 bucks uh, to take her out to the movies was like 50 bucks. And then I had maybe like an extra 20 bucks to put in my bank. So I really wasn't making too much money. I really wasn't uh, a ball. I wasn't really anything. I was just basically trying to, you know, get a summer job or get a job to help my family. And in the meantime, I'd be able to kind of take my girl out and just have a good time. And uh, long story short, uh, my girlfriend dumped me. Uh, she found a, I say that he's a little bit uglier, but I guess like <laughs> some guy that had a little bit more money than me. She is very superficial, <laughs> very evil, I would say. Uh, but that kind of lit a fire under my butt to kind of say, you know what, like, I want to just get rich to get back at her. I just want to make money. I want to, I want to be able to let her realize what she missed out on. And that was kind of my motivation back then. And obviously, like my motivations have changed since then. But I basically started like anyone else, man. Back then, there were like thousands of online gurus like we have now. It was kind of like 10 people out there. So I obviously chose the guy with the flashy Lambo, chose the guy with the girls, the champagne bottles. And, you know, I said to myself, this guy doesn't seem like the smartest guy. You know, if he could do it, so can I. And that's kind of where the obsession started because, you know, I think the two biggest wealth creators in the world are real estate and the stock market. And real estate requires such a large barrier to entry of cash. You know, I'm a fucking kid. I think I was 18, 19 years old at the time. <laughs> My savings account was like a hundred bucks. Like, you know, what am I going to do? But in the trading world with just like 500 bucks, you could open up an account. So I said, all right, you know, this guy seems like he's making a lot of money. It seems like he knows what he's talking about. Um, and he could alert me his plays like shit. I mean, I'm going to be fucking rich in a couple of years. Like fuck this, you know? And what I realized is no matter what, uh, you will never be as fast or as sharp as the guy that's running these plays. Because uh, back then I was a little bit too naive. I didn't really understand how this stuff worked. And just, I guess, a quick lesson is there's a main guru, a main pumper, and he has maybe thousands and thousands of followers. And he tells everyone that he's buying a stock at five because it's going to go to eight. And he's buying at five and his followers are buying at 510, 520, 530. And if it doesn't go to eight, he says, you know what? The trade didn't work. I'm selling at 530 and getting out. And by the time he sells at 530, the stock craters to 490, 480, 470. And now you're left losing. So I was thinking to myself, all right, if he buys, I'll just sell quickly before his alert and I'll try to make money. I'm thinking, all right, I'm smarter than these guys. I could do it. And no matter what I tried, no matter what, I tried everything in the book. I would not be able to match his entries. I would not be able to match his exits. And after a while, I just start to bleed out, bleed out, bleed out. I was taught to buy the breakout. I was taught to, uh, it's, it's either you have a long strategy. You either buy the breakout or the short strategy is you short the pump and dump. Problem is with a small account back then, there was no access to locates to short these pump and dumps, right? It was only the big guys that had access. So my first kind of year was, almost like a romantic relationship with trading. I fell in love with it so much. That I just wanted to try, try it until it worked. I want to 
Maybe I wasn't buying the breakout properly. Maybe I was looking at the wrong side. Maybe I was the issue, right? Maybe not, not the guy that was teaching me. Maybe I was the issue because this guy's making so much money. Why can't I do it? So it wasn't until I kind of discovered what shorting was that my trading career just flipped around. Like I, I didn't know that you could short. I didn't know that it existed. I thought the only way to be involved in the stock market was to buy something and then wait for it to go up and that's how you make money. You either buy and hold or there's no, no other strategy. I didn't know that you could make money when things went down. And uh, long story short, I, had to, I felt very uncomfortable opening up an offshore broker. I didn't really trust anything at the time. I really didn't, I, did, I thought I was gonna be scammed. I thought if I opened up an offshore broker and this offshore broker that I opened up does not exist anymore. So I guess I kinda did get a little bit lucky, I would say. Uh, that the broker was available. Uh, but what ended up happening is I still remember my first trade, my first short trade ever. I shorted 2,000 shares of a stock called VGGL, which I don't even, let me see if it trades now. I don't even think it trades anymore. So it was, I shorted 2,000 shares at $4 uh, of VGGL. And within a few minutes, the stock went to 350. I made $1,000. That was it. That was it. I was like, I've got it. This is it. I found it. I'm so good at buying the breakout and the stock tanking. All I got to do is short the breakout and I'm going to make money. I'm just going to do the inverse of what I've been doing. That's been causing me to lose money. So I thought, I thought I had it. I thought first trade thousand um, dollars. You know, I, it, it just made sense to me. It just made sense to me. So fast forward, uh, what ended up happening is now I was just shorting fucking everything. Right? So I lacked a process. I lacked a routine. I lacked a real strategy. I was now winging it, right? If a stock was up on a day, short. If a stock is down on a day, short. Short, short, everything that you see, short it. Because that's, that's what I thought would be the solution, right? I thought that all these companies would just continue to just go down. And I didn't realize what I was really doing. So my first year, I spent going long and losing money. Uh, my second year is when I discovered shorting and I found a little bit of success at first. You know, I had some beginner's luck, right? But I slowly started to bleed out my account again, right? And this time I was bleeding out my account because I was just shorting anything that was up on the day. I did not have any criteria. I did not have any like re uh, ability. I didn't know how to read filings. Uh, I didn't, I knew how to read a chart. I understood basic technical analysis, but I was still lack, I was still missing like a, I was missing a special ingredient in there. I was missing something that, that I didn't know. I didn't know what I was missing. Right. So I think this was, I think I was 20 at the time and I was just chugging along just grinding along. And uh, at that point I was looking for communities online. I'm trying to find someone that maybe is better than this first online guru that had the champagne and the cars and all this stuff and you know i went on twitter and i was kind of looking around but as you probably know everyone on twitter is broke at home but they're rich as fuck on twitter these guys are clueless they think they're experts they think they know everything so i was kind of stuck and trapped into that rabbit hole um and as i was trading you know i was still attending classes i was going to college uh, it got to the point where I started to maybe find a little bit of consistency in my trading uh, about I think maybe middle of year two or something like that. And when I say finding consistency, I mean, I was making a hundred dollars a day. Uh, and when I was at Starbucks making $150 a week, all of a sudden I'm making a hundred dollars a day and I feel like the richest guy in the world. So I'm telling my parents, like, I want to drop out of school. Like, this is it. I found it. In class, I am paying off kids to help me with their, uh, with my homework. I'm paying off kids to let me, to help me with some of my tests. I'm basically using this $100 a day that I'm making. And in the college world, $20 is like big money. So I'm giving these guys 20 bucks, 20 bucks. And it just made my life easier because I would sit in the back of class with my laptop and I would make my hundred dollars trading and then I would pay off certain students to kind of help me with some of my classwork so that I wouldn't get screwed. Um, so my parents were saying, you know, this is gambling, you know, you're just getting lucky, you know, stop while you're still ahead. Like this is not going to work. And the reason why they thought that way is because back in 2008, my dad had a lot of money in his 401k that just almost all disappeared. He panic sold, he freaked out and 
you know, ever since then he's hated stocks and he still hates stocks to this day. Um, so I had my parents telling me to stop. I had my friends that had no idea I was trading. I would not tell a soul because I, w I didn't want to, uh, I just felt like it was personal. It was something that I wanted to kind of figure out. I wanted to just do, and I just, I just wanted to indulge in it. So parents weren't really having it. Friends really had no idea about it. I was kind of isolating myself to be able to figure it out. And as I found more consistency, uh, as I was making $100 a day, uh, I remember my max size at one point was 500 shares, and then it was 1,000 shares, and it was 3,000 shares, and then I was basically slowly able to size up because I was able to build my bankroll. That offshore account, uh, I got it from, I think I had a, I think it was a $2,000 account maybe. I think I had that $2,000 account uh, at six times leverage. I grew it up to $10,000. And then that 10,000 grew to 30,000, I moved it to a USA broker. And then again, just started grinding and grinding and grinding. Um, I remember my first big trade that I ever had was, uh, I think CL, CLTX was the ticker. I think that doesn't even trade anymore. I think I made $67,000 in one day on that stock. And that, and then I was like, uh, I posted on Twitter, you know, I post my daily P and L's and then, um, there was a conference going on, like a, there was a Las Vegas trading conference that was going on and the guys that were running it were telling me to come, you know, meet some traders, network, you know, at that point, I think I was, tw I just turned 21 or I was just 20. So I was maybe able to just get into the, you know what it was? The event was in October and my birthday was in September. So I just turned 21. So I got invited to go to the event in Vegas. Uh, they even wanted me to do like a Q and A panel. So I went to the event in Vegas. And I went with my dad because my dad didn't really believe in trading. He didn't really believe in the stock market. He said it was a scam, right? So I'm, I'm telling my dad, look, I made $68,000 in one day. We're going to go to the sick hotel in Vegas. We're going to be surrounded by traders. Let me show you what this world is really like. And it's not a scam. I promise you it's not a scam. I know you had your own experiences, but let me show you. So we went to the event and we saw a lot of these traders, a lot of them humble, a lot of them good people. And we were watching a presentation from some Asian dude named Bao. And this guy was showing his P&L calendar of what he was trading. And he had like five red days in one year. And you see 500K in a month, a million dollars in a month. And he's making stupid, stupid, stupid amounts of money. Yet the way that he's talking, the way that he's articulating. And after all the speakers that spoke, my dad was like, I like this guy. He's, that's, that's all he said. And at this point, I didn't know who Bao was. He was just some guy on the internet that made a bunch of money, whatever. So we're talking and that whole trip is a little bit hazy because I was definitely drinking and definitely partying. But I think I went to the club one night with Bao. Uh, we were just hanging out, not even really talking. Uh, and then at the end of the event, I think I texted him or I DM'd him on Twitter and was like, yo, it was like such a pleasure to meet you. Um, thank you for like being so kind and like generous. Like, thank you for sharing your knowledge, this and that. And he was like, yeah, man, like it was cool. Like he met my father at, um, there was like a cocktail reception. So my dad was very, very interested. He wanted to talk to him. So he talked to my dad. He didn't know he was my dad. So long story short, that's kind of where I, the, that's kind of where I figured out who Bao was, what his deal was. And if I never kind of took that leap of faith and went to Vegas, maybe my life would have been so much more different. So that's kind of where that whole journey started. Um, that's kind of where I found Bao. And it was, you got to think too, it's like everyone wants to befriend a trader that makes money for their own selfish reasons. I wasn't really befriending Bao. I was just telling him like, Hey man, like, thank you for like what you did. And like, it's, it's going to help me. And like, that's always, I was just trying to be like a good guy and appreciative of his, him being able to share his knowledge. Right. And it just so happened that like my dad really like got along with him as well. He thought he was a great guy. thought he was a smart guy, really appreciated how humble he was. And fast forward after that, um, Bao and I kind of kept in touch um, we, we were in a kind of private chat room. I was invited to like a private chat room with a bunch of other big time traders and we were all kind of sharing ideas. Um, 
Bao was more of a technical trader. He's very, very good at reading and understanding charts. Whereas back then I was more of a fundamental trader. I knew how to read filings. I understood filings. I spent time learning it. And here I was being able to add value to these other big time traders, which is why they kind of kept me around. Right? So we were in that private chat with, I would say maybe five or six big name traders. Some of the big guys you see on Twitter these days, and we were all just trying to kind of help each other out. Right? So that chat dissipated, uh, a lot of people kind of didn't want to share their ideas anymore, felt like uh, maybe they were too smart. I don't know. It's, traders have an ego, and I, I'm not that type of person, but I understand these guys. They're making millions and millions of dollars a year, and they have no reason to kind of share their ideas. So Bao and I kept in touch, right? So we kept in touch on Skype, and we would just be friendly and just talk and share ideas. You know, if there was a stock moving, let's say, Today, EYEG was moving. So we would say, what are the levels that you're watching? So I'm looking at, I see $6, I see $6.50, I see 7 bucks. He's like, okay, I see the same thing. Now, whenever both me and him uh, agreed on the lines or the levels, we knew that was a trade that we should take. If even one of us was off, that would either be a trade that we wouldn't take or that would be a trade that we size in less on. So after a shit, man, I can't even remember, maybe like a year of just like talking and just sharing ideas, I was kind of able to reverse engineer what he was kind of looking for. So Bao was mentoring me while I was also reverse engineering. It, was, it wasn't like, all right, these are what the lines are. This is where you should short. This is what you should do. It was almost like seeing him trade, seeing how he traded after the fact and reverse engineering, kind of like what we do at MIC, right? We show you our trades after the fact, we explain our plan, we trade, and then we show you the trades after the fact. So that's kind of what we were doing back then. And it started to become a friendly competition. We started to beat each other. We started to compete to see who could get better fills. And then, um, you know, we both started to find a lot of success, but there was, there was still something missing, right? There was still something missing because as we would trade and as we would make money, there would be certain days that we would just give it all right back. And back then we didn't understand what was happening. There was kind of like a missing puzzle piece in our trading. We would be, we would make $5,000 a day, right? And then every Thursday, that 5,000 would be like a minus $5,000 day. And we just wouldn't understand what the hell was going on until we started to realize that, okay, you know, we're making money in the morning, but the middle of the day, towards the end of the day, we're, the money is shrinking. We're losing the money. So we ended up figuring out that, you know, past 1030 is when the volume shrinks, the algorithmic trading takes control, and they use the low volume to bounce these stocks. So when you have a stock that goes from five to six and tanks all the way back down to five, you maybe think to yourself, all right, 450 is coming. I'm going to short more. Instead, they bounce it to 550, consolidate it, bounce it back to six, consolidate it, and then rip it through the roof. So after losing so much money, getting squeezed, we create a rule around it. It wasn't as formal as the zombie rule that we call today. It was just kind of the rule that, hey, it's time to walk away, right? It's time to walk away. Because as you know, that was addicted. He's, he can't stop. And I'm the same way. I cannot stop unless someone rips me out of the computer. And what I do these days is I tell my broker to cut me off. Uh, one of our members on does is his wife calls the broker and tells the broker, yo, shut my husband off <laughs> or his secretary will take his laptop. So we are addicts. So what we realized is the longer you stay in front of the computer does not mean you make more money for the longest time. We thought that the longer you work, the longer you trade, the more money you make. Actually, it is the polar opposite. The less you work, the quicker you're able to walk away, the more money you're able to keep in your pocket because I think of it as a casino. The longer you're in front of the tables, you're bound to make a mistake. You're bound to get sloppy. You're bound to get overconfident. If you have that ability to stand up and walk away and do it consistently, that's been my secret for so long. That's been my Bible has been the zombie role. So I know that was a lot, but <laughs> it's all great stuff. You already touched on a lot of the things I was, I was going to ask you. So that's perfect. You know, obviously Bao has been a, a wonderful mentor for you. 
Um, What's the most valuable thing you would say that you've learned from Bao over the years? Remain humble. Mm -hmm. Remain humble is the key. If you live below your standards, if you continue to remain humble, if you eliminate your ego and understand that you can learn something from other people, that is invaluable. There's too many people uh, that have egos. There's too many people that are arrogant and the market will always find a way to humble these people. So if we continue to remain humble and continue to be good people, the world will find a way to reward us. Bao is very superstitious. He believes in karma. He believes in fate. And I didn't believe in any of that shit until I met Bao. And what I've learned is if you are a good person and you do good things, the world has a funny way of rewarding that. So that's kind of always been something that not only Bao has taught me, but my dad has taught me as well. Remain humble is always the key. Uh, if you're making a hundred grand a year, pretend like you're only making 40 grand a year, live below your standards, live below your means. Um, I think that's what's, and be a good person, man. Be a good person. There's too much negativity out there in the world. There's too many evil people out there in the world that, you know, all it takes is really one good person to change the world. And Bao is the type of guy that has the million dollar house, the million dollar cars, millions and millions of dollars in the bank, real estate, this, that. Yet the guy wears $10 flip-flops, $20 pants, $10 t-shirts, and the same fucking hat. And he does that because that's the type of guy he is, right? That's, that's just who he was from day one. Nothing has changed. And for me, what I'm learning or what I'm trying to kind of adjust to is that, man, like if this guy has everything and he's this humble and he's this good, it's probably because he is such a good person that he has so, so many of these blessings in the world. So for me, it just makes sense to just continue to be a good person, to continue to help people. And no matter what happens with Bao, I think that's going to be his legacy forever is to always be a good person because if a guy, I mean, you got to think if a guy like Bao is here and has millions and millions of dollars, why the fuck would he ever answer some guy that has a $500 account asking what the PDT rule is like at least have some respect. And Bao is still the type of guy that just responds to these people because he knows what it was like to, you know, be one of those guys. Right. And it's like the thing that we preach at MIC is once you make it, once you get it, it is your duty to send the elevator back down because that's what we did for you when you were first starting. So I think that's something that's very important. I think that if people and traders remain humble, not only will their P&L grow, but it'll, their happiness will also grow as well. How did you guys end up working together to develop MIC? What was your, what was your, your motivation? Yeah, so it's kind of a crazy story, to be honest, because uh, Bao and I were trading and we were making a bunch of money together. And even when we were making a bunch of money, there was this sense of emptiness, right? It was like, it was like, what is, what is the point, man? What is the point? It's like, I felt like I was on like an Island, right? I was felt like I was on an Island and only Bao understood, right? He was the only other person that lived on this Island with me. And again, it sounds kind of stupid that, you know, you're making all this money, you're not happy. But if you ask any person that has money, the reason why they are successful is because they fell in love with the game. I fell in love with trading. I fell in love with trying to be the best. I fell in love with trying to say, fuck you to my girlfriend. And because of that, profits were a byproduct, right? So here I am making all this money and I feel good and I accomplished my goals, yet I felt like a sense of emptiness. So not only did we feel like there was something missing, now it was kind of where it was starting, where all these gurus and all these scammers were starting to pump their stocks and pump their alerts and start to teach people the wrong way to trade. And, you know, after a certain point of betting against all these clowns, we start to, we start to feel bad. Like shit, man, like here we are making all this money from all these idiots. There's gotta be some people out there that actually truly care about learning. Right? So we started MIC as a way to kind of give us uh, an avenue to help people that wanted to be helped, right? Because as you know, all these guys are lazy. All these guys are looking for the $20 Forex alerts. They're looking for everything. So we said, all right, for those that are hardworking, for those that are hungry, for those that are humble, right? 
let's give them something, right? Let's give them the ability that if they are willing to put in the work, they'll be able to accomplish their dreams. Because I didn't know how good it felt to help people until I started helping people. Bao has been helping people his whole life. And that's kind of what makes him high. And I didn't really know what that was like. So Bao was, uh, Bao was kind of like, you know what? He's like, if you, if you are serious about this, if you're serious about it, you do all the work. You do all the work and I'll just help you out at the end of it. So I said, fuck it. I'm not doing anything else. I'll do all the work. Uh, so create the website, created, got all the lawyers involved, got everything set up. Uh, and then Bao was like, oh shit, you actually did it. I, I didn't think you were going to fucking do it. All right, let's, let's go. <laughs> like, all right, now I know you're serious. Now I know you were fucking around. And we've been friends already for a while. So it's hard to kind of find someone that you trust. And then, you know, Tosh got involved in the picture too, because Tosh met Bao at his birthday. Bao was meeting another trader on Twitter. And Tosh happened to be friends with that trader on Twitter. Never met Bao before, bought Bao a bottle for his birthday. And just that small gesture was what made Bao trust Tosh. And then I got introduced to Tosh. And then we started this whole thing. And if I'm honest, we didn't think, anyone gave a fuck, right? We didn't think anyone cared about trying to learn how to trade. We thought everyone just wanted to get the easy way to get rich quick stuff. And, you know, when we started MIC, me and Bao were like, all right, you know, we're probably going to get hundred members. And, you know, if we get a hundred members, we'll be happy. And that'll be good enough, a good enough group for us to teach. And, you know, I guess we didn't realize how much demand there was out there for something real something that could actually teach you how to trade and not teach you how to be scammed. Day one, we had 300 members. Wow. After two weeks, we had 500 members. And two years later, we're at 1,500 members. So it just goes to show that there are people out there that are willing to learn. And the strategies, the process, everything that we provide, we pride ourselves on it, right? Because if the product, if MIC sucked, we wouldn't have so many members. If, if it didn't work, we would not retain our members. What we're most proud of at MIC is that when someone joins, there's a 90% chance they don't leave because they realize the value there, right? When I went to college, I was paying 20 or $30,000 a year for college and I didn't really learn anything. And with MIC for $2,000 for the whole year, for 90% less, you could really learn a skill that's going to make you shit loads of money. Like today I made $4,916. What we pride ourselves on is the fact that when someone joins, they stay, which means that we know it's working, right? And that's kind of something that we're really proud of because, you know, I was talking about in my Instagram live, um, I made, I think it was on Monday, I made like or yesterday, one of these days I made like 20 grand. I forget which I think day it was, it was yesterday. Day. Yeah, yesterday. So I made 20 grand. I was telling Bao, like, I really don't feel anything, man. This 20 grand day feels like a $200 day. And then we had the video with On, right? So On came on, who is a doctor who uh, started trading during COVID. And he had some success in the past, but he was missing something. He was missing. He was worse than Bao. He was addicted. He was missing the zombie rule. So he implemented the zombie rule and in two months, he's up 300 grand. And I told Bao, I'm like, bro, sometimes we work 15 hours a day. Sometimes we work 20 hours a day and we get all these people that are not watching the videos that are not putting in the work and it discourages us. It makes me say, fuck man, if I'm putting in all this work and no one is really caring, why am I still, why do I still care? Right? Why do I still care? And you know, after hearing on story and after hearing the success that he had, I told Bao, I'm like, look, man, that one story made those 18 hour days worth it. That one story of on being successful, following the process and now giving back to others is why we started MIC in the first place. And now it lit a fire under my ass again to keep going because there are people like on, there are people like Faye, there are people like James that actually do give a fuck and are willing to put in the work. And that is something that I think is very important. You can never judge a community based on the people that run it. You know, I'm a good trader. Bao is an excellent trader. But what we pride ourselves on is the fact that our members are successful. So we showcase our members more than we like to showcase ourselves.
Yeah, that's so rewarding. MIC teaches a, a really great playbook of high probability setups and the library of training videos is super helpful when it comes to mastering each strategy. I wanted to ask you at the moment, what's your favorite setup? Okay, so towards the beginning of the year, what I've realized was the first red day setup was incredible. It was, I was making money on Tesla. I was making money on everything with the first red day setup. But lately in this current crazy small cap COVID induced market, the best trades have been coming literally from just shorting resistance, letting the stock tank and then shorting the bounce has been the thing that's been working very well in this market because the stocks are gapping up so high, so large, so quick that there's so much meat. There's so much range that even if these stocks tank, you will be able to short the bounce and make money on it consistently. That's what I did today on EYEG, BMRA, on basically everything. So what I've realized currently in this market is wait for the top to be set and short the bounce. There's still uh, first red day setups. There's still death line plays, but not in as much abundance as shorting these broken stocks are currently in this market right now. Are MIC's textbook setups primarily strategies that Bao has employed and refined over the course of his trading career, or are they the result of collaboration between the two of you? It's both of us, right? It's both of us. So the first red day setup was actually an OTC setup. It was three green days. And then usually on the third or the fourth green day, when the stock turns red, it tends to reverse. It still works on small caps, works on large caps like Tesla, works on everything because that is a signal for profit taking, right? When the stock goes red, it is a signal for profit taking. It's universal. I don't think that's ever going to disappear. The low hanging fruit setup was something that Bao actually created himself. It was Bao's secret strategy for the longest time ever. And that was actually the first strategy that he taught Tosh. And Tosh traded that strategy for a year. And after Tosh found consistency using that strategy, we realized that, okay, that worked as well. Um, the death line setup was something that actually we created ourselves after MIC uh, existed. We started to recognize more and more patterns. We started to realize kind of what was happening. So we created the death line after MIC and we created the first bounce strategy after MIC. So if you think about it, without MIC and without the members, maybe some of these strategies would not have existed. So I now believe that everything happens for a reason. I'm superstitious. Uh, there are certain times that I won't shave my beard until a red day. Bao was wearing the same pajamas for like a month straight <laughs> until he had a red day. Uh, so what I truly believe is, again, we are trying to do the right thing. We are trying to be good people by creating MIC and passing the elevator back down. And the world has rewarded us by helping us realize new setups to help us make more money and educate more people. And it just seems so clear that if you are a good person and you try to help people and you do the right thing, the world just likes to reward that. And you could call that karma. You could call it fate. You could just call it if you're good to people, good things happen. But I truly, truly, truly believe that if you continue to do the right thing, it's all matters. For those who are hearing about my investing club for the very first time, I just wanted to mention that your community has now grown to more than 1,500 traders, provides members with one-on-one -on -one moderator phone calls, which is incredible. Four trading DVDs, a Slack chat room with 20 plus channels, weekly webinars and videos, an extensive training library with more than 650 videos and over 200 hours of high-level content, automated research tools, a community archive with a database of more than 500,000 messages, in-person seminars, meetups, and more. One thing I've really noticed is that traders who have previous experience with other rooms immediately see how differently MIC is run. In your mind, what are the biggest things that set MIC apart from other trading communities? So that's, that's actually really great. So I actually hope that people join these scammers first so that they actually realize how much value we provide for our members, right? Because if you have not been, uh, if you have not felt the pain of being scanned, you could never appreciate what it's like to be real, right? So for me, honestly, I mean, like what we created is something that we wanted as traders. I can never imagine that I would be able to get on the phone with a trader that makes six or seven figures and have them mentor you. I can never imagine that every Tuesday there's a large cap webinar. Every Thursday there's a strategy webinar. Every Saturday there's a QA. and a And then in between there's educational videos every single day. You know, we created something that we thought could truly help people, right? So we have brand new videos every single day. We have 
Uh, I think we're at three, six, nine, 12, about 12 webinars a month. Uh, we're doing four Q and A's a month. So we're basically providing you with all the resources that you need to be successful. Now it is up to you to attend, to participate, and to be able to utilize the tools that we are providing for you. And uh, Jason, you're actually in MIC. So what do you think about it? Like, what do you, what do you think kind of is our special sauce? What do you think works or why do you think our members are kind of finding consistency so quickly? As I mentioned, one of the things that you really notice when you have experience with other rooms is how differently things are run. And, you know, in a lot of other rooms, obviously there is um, a lot more going on behind the scenes than what you might originally see. In other words, you know, the people that run those rooms, obviously, and you, you touched on this in the, the beginning of our call, you know, they're banking from, from the volume that's coming in when their members chase, you know, chase their buys. And that's something that you don't see that in MIC. You know, I mean, oftentimes you don't even know what positions you're in, where you're in. Um, you know, it's, it's a completely different environment. There's a strong focus on process. Uh, risk management is huge. The resources that are available to members, uh, the calls, you know, I mean, the moderator phone calls, that's something that's really special. And not enough people take advantage of it. It kind of blows my mind. Joe, one of our head moderators does weekly screen shares with lifetime members and people aren't attending that. So, I mean, something else is like, if you are pumping stocks and you are alerting stocks to thousands and thousands of people and you're losing money, you got to be a dumb fuck, man. It, it blows my mind that people are losing money pumping stocks. And that makes me say, how bad of a trader do you have to be that you're losing money when you have thousands and thousands of people following you? What we do differently at MIC is I post my watch list in the morning. I do a video watch list reviewing that. I adjust my plan in the morning. I execute my plan and then I share how I traded, if I did it right, if I did it wrong. And that's the true way to learn. The true way to learn is to be mentored, not to be pumped up stocks. And I get it, right? I get it because I was one of them. I know what it was like. It was, all right, I'm smarter than them. I'm just going to do it. And then as soon as I make money, blah, blah, blah. And it's just the same story all over again. And you have stocks like today, like MNPR. You got these chat room pumpers buying at 13, saying 15 is coming. And now it's at $7. The stock is down 50%. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, you're no longer a day trader. You paid this guy $5,000 to learn and you blew your account in one day. Meanwhile, he made 20 grand on that trade. So mm -hmm. it's just like people need to open up their eyes. I think a lot of people are uneducated to what is really going on here. There's other chat rooms, other communities that I won't name by name, but they buy stocks ahead of time. They alert it two days later to all their friends, all their buddies, and then they alert to their chat room and then they start dumping. And there's just so many scams out there that no one has any idea about. And it's just, that's kind of where MIC needed to, that's where we kind of paved our territory. We said, all right, there's all these frauds, all these con artists, all this bullshit, but you know what? If you really want to learn, here's something real. Here's what I do. Here's what Bao does. Here's what our members do. See their progress, see their success, see this, see that. And what I am most proud of in my own personal training is it's August 12th, 2020 right now. I think I'm up almost a million dollars on the year so far. And the best part is, you know, I stopped my trading at 1030. Mm -hmm. So I'm only trading for one hour a day. That's when so we're I talking right guys, now. Yeah. It's, to me, it's like, how can I be upset or how can I be jealous or how can I care if I'm sitting here an hour a day making a million dollars a year? You know, you don't have to make 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 million dollars to be happy and successful and rich. You know, I'm working one hour a day uh, trading. I'm spending the other 10 hours helping members, PMs, trying to improve MIC. And to me, I found that, you know, I trade my best when I'm the least amount of stress. So mm -hmm. I trade, I walk away, I help members, I educate. And because I help members, because I watch all the videos before they get uploaded, I am the testimonial that says, if you watch the content and you preach, this is what is possible, right? It's what's possible. Yeah. And, and you're, you're, you're a real trader. Man. You're a legitimate trader. You mentioned what you're up for the year. That's come from trading, real trading. Yep. It's not coming from alerts, you know, to other members and you have 500, a thousand people, 10,000 people, you know, that is piggybacking on without and, and alerts, in. without pumping, without anything. And right. believe it or not, people think that me and Bao are making a bunch of money from MIC. And if I'm just truly 100% honest, 
about 90% of the profits that we make, we put it back into the business to be able to grow it because our, I guess maybe this is like, maybe I shouldn't talk about, but our strategy is to become so big that these pumpers, these scammers don't have the ability to scam anyone anymore. The reason why they're able to scam so much is because they're spending literally $500,000 a month in marketing and advertising and promotions. And the only way to beat them is to fucking outspend them. So there's been times that I've dumped trading profits into trying to help the business because our primary income comes from trading, right? It comes from trading. And what we do is we try to grow the business, try to have more people discover MIC because at the end of the day, there's so much fucking bullshit out there that people don't even think our testimonials are real. Mm -hmm. I have people that message me on Instagram that say, Hey man, like this can't be real. It's every day. It's every day. You guys are, it can't be fucking real. So I tell them, try it for a month. If you don't like it, it's two, it's $5 a day. If you don't like it, I'll fucking buy you 10 Frappuccinos, right? It's like <laughs> people just need to try it. And I think their biggest fear is either A, they've been scammed in the past and they think everyone is a scam or B, it's too expensive. And my, my defense for saying it's too expensive is this. MIC is 200 a month. Maybe other competing people are $100 a month. What I say is you're trying to get a 50% discount on your education all it takes is one stock like MNPR to 50% discount your trading account. Do you want to learn from the Harvard of trading or do you want to learn from the community college of trading? Oftentimes you are investing in yourself. You are investing in your education. It is no surprise that we are growing fast, rapid and retaining our members because it is in our best interest to teach members how to make money so that they could continue to stay with us. So mm -hmm. it is in our best interest to help our members. And that's what we try to showcase every single day. Well, we're just about out of time for today, Alex. You know, I could go on for much longer, but I want to be respectful of your time. <laughs> Before we go, could you tell us a little bit about MIC's upcoming boot camp? What it's all about? When is it? Uh, and how can people sign up for that? Sure. So our upcoming boot camp is on August 17th. Uh, you can sign up at myinvestingclub.com slash anniversary. So what we do for our bootcamp events is Bao actually trades live, right? So you're going to be able to watch Bao trade, execute live, explain the process and see how a true professional trades without pumping or learning and seeing kind of uh, in his mind what he's like. So what we do is last year we hosted the event in Philly, but due to the pandemic this year, we have to kind of go virtual. So it's going to be a full day event where I'm going to teach people how to build a watch list. Bao is going to be trading live. We're going to have presentations from our moderators. And the best thing that I could tell people is with so many people online that you don't know who to trust, that you don't know anything about, give us a try one time. Come look at our event. Come see our process. Come see our presentation. Come see how we run things. And if you're not convinced, I don't think you'll ever be convinced. Awesome. It's an event that I'm really looking forward to. And again, thanks so much, Alex, for coming on and taking the time to tell us a little bit more about yourself and also the MIC community. You're an incredibly gifted trader and you and Bao put together a wonderful trading community with MIC. I've been super impressed by the dedicated team of hardworking moderators, uh, the top shelf educational resources, the one-on-one -on -one mentoring available to members. It's really, as I said, an amazing community. And I look forward to catching up with you again in the future. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. And again, if anyone has any questions, you know, uh, you can find some of our videos on youtube.com slash my investing club. If you guys want to have, if you guys have any trading questions, you could DM me on Instagram, Alex underscore Temiz. Uh, I'm again, it's not a robot responding is usually me. I try to respond to everyone. So please don't, don't waste my time with a question that you could Google. Just be a little bit respectful and you know, I'm always willing to help those hardworking people. Hey, thanks Alex. So that's it for today, everyone. Thanks for tuning in and until next time, happy trading.